डॉक्टर बाबा साहेब आंबेडकर ओपन यूनिवर्सिटी हेलो माय डियर स्टूडेंट्स आई असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर नीलेष बोखाणी वेलकम यू फ्रॉम चैतन्य स्टूडियो डॉक्टर बाबा साहेब आंबेडकर ओपन यूनिवर्सिटी यू आर वाचिंग सॉफ्टवेयर इंजीनियरिंग लेक्चर सीरीज सो टुडे यू आर गोइंग टू लर्न अबाउट सॉफ्टवेयर प्रोसेस मॉडल इन विच वी आर गोइंग टू टेक द टॉपिक विच इज इंक्रीमेंटल मॉडल यू कैन सी द एजेंडा what is an incremental model then we will see importance and characteristics of the incremental model then we will go for types of incremental model then we will see when is an incremental model used then uh, we will go for phases of incremental model then we will see some of the advantages and disadvantages of incremental model then it it's very important to learn about the uh, difference between the waterfall model and incremental model as you know we have uh, learned uh, about waterfall model in our last lecture so in this lecture we will uh, see some of the differences between these two models okay let's start with the topic which is what is an incremental model so incremental model combines the elements of waterfall model in an iterative manner in the incremental model of software engineering waterfall model is repeatedly applied in each increment so the incremental model applies linear sequences in a required pattern as calendar time passes so each linear sequence produces an increment in the work thus it delivers a series of uh, releases called increments which provide progressively more functionality for the client as each increment is delivered so software development life cycle models are the process or methodology chosen for the creation of software product in software engineering based on the objectives and goals of the project now the created model will outline the techniques to be used for carrying out each iteration step as well as how the software is to be produced for each one so when selecting a model for software development there are a few things to take into account such as the structure of the organization how it will affect testing procedures and the goals that need to be achieved so the use of uh, gradual development is one such strategy the software industry is in the frenzy over incremental development so it is the most widely adopted model of software development in which the software requirement is broken down into multiple modules during the sdlc so all modules are treated as sub projects that follow all uh, phases of the sdlc incremental model so in this unit we will look at four phases of the incremental model in software engineering that can help make the software development process more effective and lead to the development of higher quality software so before continuing let's first understand what the incremental model is all about and what is uh, what its types are and when to use this approach so the incremental uh, build model is a method of software development where the uh, product is designed and implemented and tested incrementally so a little more is added each time until the product is finished right so it involves both development and maintenance now the product is defined as finished when it satisfies all its requirements so this model combines the elements of the waterfall model now, with the iterative philosophy of prototyping now the incremental process model is also known as the successive version model so incremental model also known as the successive version model so it's a widely adopted model of software development process where the software requirements are divided or broken down into multiple stand alone modules 
the, so it increments in the SDLC. So each increment is treated as sub project and goes through all phases of the SDLC incremental model, right. Now this sounds similar to an iterative model. However, this model is an enhancement to the iterative model and due to this, the incremental model is also called the iterative enhancement model. So, in the incremental model, instead of making one use leap, we achieve our goals in small steps. So, as soon as the requirements are divided into modules or, or increments, this incremental development will begin. So, as part of the incremental model, each module of passes through four phases, uh, which are requirements, design and development, testing and implementation. So, every new release of the module adds functionality to the previous release module. So, the process continues until all the intended functionality has been implemented and the complete system is developed. Now, let us see next slide. Here, uh, you can see diagram of project calendar time on your screen. So, actually an incremental model in software engineering is one such uh, which combines the elements of the waterfall model in an iterative manner. So, it delivers a series of releases called increments that provide progressively more functionality for the client as each increment is delivered. In the incremental model of software engineering, the waterfall model is repeatedly applied in each increment. Now, the incremental model L, uh, applies linear sequences in a required pattern as calendar time passes. So, each linear sequence produces an increment in the work. As from the diagram, you can see that there are five phases which are carried out in each increment. So, the first increment is often a core product where the necessary requirements are addressed and the extra features are added in the next increments. Now, the core product is used and evaluated by the client. So, once the customer assesses the core product, there is plan development for the next increment. Thus, in every increment, the needs of the client are kept in mind and more features and functions are added and the core product is updated. So, this process continues until the uh, complete product is produced. So, the increments earlier to the main increment is called as stripped down version of the final product. So, this increases form a base for customer evaluation. So, on this basis, the client can suggest new requirements if required. If there are a smaller number of employees to work on the project uh, incremental development model is extremely useful to complete the project before the deadline. In a project, early increments can be done with a, num a, with a smaller number of people. In case, if the core product is well defined and understood more, employees could be added if uh, needed in the future enhancement. In the next slide, you can see importance and characteristics of the incremental model. So, let us start. Actually, the main importance of the incremental model is that it divides the software development into sub modules and each sub module is developed by following the software development uh, cycle process means SDLC, uh, like analysis, design, code and test. So, by doing this model, make sure that we are not missing any objective that is expected from the end of the software, even though how uh, minor objective it can be. Thus, uh, we are achieving 100% objective of the software with this model. Also, since 
वी आर टेस्टिंग अग्रेसिवली आफ्टर इच स्टेज वी आर मेकिंग श्योर ऑफ द एंड सॉफ्टवेयर इज डिफेक्ट फ्री एंड ऑल्सो इच स्टेज इज कंपेटेबल विद प्रीवियसली डेवलप्ड एंड फ्यूचर डेवलपिंग स्टेजिस नाउ लेट्स लुक इन टू फ्यू ऑफ द कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ द इंक्रीमेंटल मॉडल एंड वाई इज सच पॉपुलर so uh, we will start with first one actually the software to be developed will be broken into many stages and hence there will uh, many mini sub projects for the software then the partial systems that will be developed will be combined to get the complete objective of the software now the priority will be assigned to each of the stages or requirements and highest requirement of the software will be tackled first then also after a requirement of the increment is handled and then that the particular increment will be frozen and concentration will be on the next increment or requirements at any given time the plan will be laid out only for the existing increment without any long term plans so the complete focus will be on the requirement that is being worked upon then each increments version is developed following the analysis design code and test phase and also each incremental version is usually developed by following the iterative waterfall model so these versions can be developed using other models as well then in the next slide uh you can see types of incremental model so there are two types of incremental models in the software development life cycle first one is staged delivery model so in this kind of incremental model just one section of the project is built at a time so this allows for the product or service to be developed and delivered in stages so with each stage building on the previous one then next one is parallel delivery model so in this kind of incremental model different sub systems are built concurrently so it can reduce the time required for the development process as long as there are enough resources available so these are our two types of incremental model let's see next slide here you can see when is an incremental model used so most often incremental models are used in the following scenarios first one we can say requirements are clearly specified understood and are known up front then certain requirements however require time then we have there is a requirement to release the product early or get it to the market early then engineering team lacks the required skill set or the resources are unavailable then product based companies develop their own products then new technologies are used high risk goals of features are involved projects have long development schedules now what are the phases of the incremental model so let's take a look at the four phases of an incremental model so let's see in our next slide what are different phases of incremental model so you can see one diagram on your screen which uh, includes different phases of the incremental model so that let's define each and every phase so in the following diagram you will see the different phases of the sdlc incremental model here a requirement phase is the first one so the incremental model in software engineering begins with the requirement phase so this phase is extremely important in product development because developing a solution that gives value to clients is impossible without understanding the initial requirements so at this stage business analysts and project managers gather 
functional requirements as well as non-functional requirements from potential clients. So, having completed the requirement analysis process, the team should collect all of the project's requirements in one document actually. So, after gathering requirements, the business analyst converts them into technical requirements with the help of senior team members such as the subject uh, matter expert which is called SME and the team leader actually. Now, a document called the SRS software requirement specification. So, it contains detailed specification of the technical requirements. So, after the SRS has been created, we need to send it to the client or to the SMEs on the client side for approval before processing uh, with the next phase. Now, the SRS will be a reference document for the next phase actually. Now, let us uh, discuss about second phase which is design and development phase. Here, uh, during this phase, the product architect develops an optimized product architecture by using the SRS document. So, the product architect creates a rough design, working models, specifies how the software works, then how the new design uh, looks like, then how the control flows from one screen to another, etc. So, based on the requirements provided by the SRS, we will do it. So, when they are done creating the product architecture, they will save it in a DDS, which is called design document specification. So, diagrams like entity relationship diagram, ERD and data flow diagram, DFD may be included in it. So, once approved by the all uh, stakeholders, the DDS document can be implemented. So, eventually overall system architecture is designed by defining each module's functionality or capability and its interaction with other modules or cross systems. So, next uh, we, we can say developers begin development by following coding standards and established by the organizations. Now, code is developed from scratch according to the requirements in an SRS. So, uh, as well as the design specifications in DDS also. So, developing clean and efficient code can have a significant impact on the performance of the software. So, programmers must write code in an organized and detailed manner. As well, the language used to write the software code can vary depending on the type of software being created. So, its objectives and its environment of the use actually. So, upon completion of coding, developers use the programming tools to compile and debug the new code to ensure that it works properly. Now, let us discuss about our uh, third uh, phase which is testing phase. So, in this phase, once the code is written, it is tested to determine whether it works as expected. Now, the prior to handling over code to the testing team, the developer uh, performs initial testing such as unit testing and or application integration testing. So, if all goes well, then the code is moved to the testing environment. Now, from there the testing team will perform the testing. Uh, then there are several types of testing. Uh, the testing team performs uh, quality assurance testing, uh, then uh, system integration testing that is SIT, then, then uh, user acceptance testing which is UAT and approval testing. So, testing is done to determine if the code and programming meet customer requirements or not. So, before the implementation phase begins, companies can identify all bugs and errors in their software during the testing phase. Now, let us understand about uh, our fourth phase which is implementation phase. 
Now the incremental model of software development has reached its final phase. So the product is ready to uh, go live after it has been tested and has passed each testing phase. Now the product is therefore ready to be used in a real world environment by end users. After the software is fully tested and is free of errors and defects, the client reviews the uh, test results and approves the deployment. Now upon product deployment, the new functionality becomes available to the current end users of the system. So in some cases, product deployment may be divided into several phases based on the company's business strategy. So a user acceptance test is one of the ways uh, companies seek uh, feedback from the intended users. So uh, thus the software can be tested in a pre-production environment before a real world production thereby leading to better results. So let us see our next slide. So the title is advantages of the incremental model. So let us see some of the advantages. First advantages that you can see on your screen is since the object uh, will be divided into incremental stages, it will be made sure that 100% requirements are achieved and 100% objective of the software. Since there is testing at each incremental phase, there will be multiple testing for the software and more the testing better the result and fewer defects. Now by adopting this approach, we can lower the initial uh, delivery cost. Then this model is flexible and incurs less cost when there is a change in the requirement or the scope. Then the user or the customer can provide feedback on each stage. So work effort will be uh, valued and sudden changes in the requirement can be prevented. Then compared to other model, this model is tend to be cheaper uh, on the pockets of the user. By following these models, errors can be identified quite easily. So we have seen uh, some of the uh, advantages of uh, incremental model. Now let us see some of the drawbacks or disadvantages on our next slide. So the incremental model also has disadvantages uh, we can see like this model requires meticulous planning and designing. Then in order to break it down and build its, uh, it incrementally, it needs a complete and clear definition of the whole system actually. So if the requirement is not uh, comprehended at the beginning, the whole process of the incrementing will be shattered. So system architecture may encounter problems if not all requirements are collected upfront during the entire software lifecycle. So, a problem in one unit uh, needs to be corrected in all units, which takes a lot of time. Then last one is the iteration phases are rigid and they do not overlap each other. So each and every disadvantages I have written on your uh, screen. Uh, so you can uh, remember each and every advantages and disadvantages of incremental model. So it's very important uh, question uh, for your exam. So if we have to jump on conclusion there, then the conclusion can be like this. Various models are available for developing software and uh, meeting the desired objectives. But incremental modeling achieves 100% of expected software objectives. So in the incremental model, instead of making one huge leap, we achieve our goals in small steps. So this model is used when it is not possible to reach a decision in one go, but necessitates a step by step process. So this model is primarily applied where we have a clear understanding of the requirements and when 100% accuracy of the software is required. Now the incremental model is most common in the public sector where major changes would uh, probably cause public conflicts 
and in software development where uh, small changes will help avoid costly errors. Now let's go for next slide where we will see some of the points to discuss the uh, difference between waterfall model and incremental model. Here first one is working version. So the working version of the waterfall model is delivered in the deployment phase. For example, the last phase of the waterfall model. Whereas the working version of an incremental model incorporating basic requirements is delivered in the first increments and supplementary features are delivered in a later iteration. Then we have next point which is workflow. So, in the waterfall model follows a sequential workflow which incorporates communication, planning, modeling, construction and deployment phases. So, one after the another respectively. Now, the incremental model follows the linear along with the parallel workflow which means that before delivering the first working version of the software the team starts processing phases for the second incremental uh, working phase and so on. Then we have user involvement. So, in the waterfall model, the user involves while addressing the requirements in the communication phase actually. However, in the incremental model, the communication phase occurs in each iteration. So, the user gets involved in each iteration. Then we have feasibility. So, in the former, once the software is deployed, there is no chance to accommodate any change as there is no trackback. So, in the latter, the changes can be accommodated easily during the latter iteration actually. Now, we have team size. So, the waterfall model requires a longer team size. However, the incremental model does not require a large team size. Then we have documentation. So, in the waterfall model, everything in every phase is documented, right? So, hence there is too much documentation, whereas comparatively there is less documentation in the incremental model. Then we have maintenance. So, in the waterfall model, there are very least chances of providing maintenance as after deploying the product and the user is hardly approached for maintenance. So, on the other hand, the incremental model promotes maintenance. Then we have next point, testing. So, in the waterfall model, testing of the software is done once after the coding phase is completed. Whereas, in the incremental model, testing is performed at each iteration. Then we have our last point that is retracking. In the waterfall model, retracking is impossible as there is no provision to return back to the earlier phase. However, in the incremental model, retracking is possible as at each iteration, the easier phases are processed. So, we have covered incremental model in today's lecture. In our next lecture, we will see another model. Till then, happy learning.